هذه الحلقة برعاية خدمات التدريب المقدمة من المدربة ومقيم الجودة المعتمد سارة العلي من خلال برنامج مهارات القهوة يمكنكم الحصول على شهادة معتمدة من جمعية القهوة المختصة العالمية في عدة دورات منها مهارات البارستا مهارات تحضير القهوة اليدوية أو المقطرة ومهارات العلوم الحسية لمزيد من المعلومات يمكنكم الاطلاع على التفاصيل في أسفل الحلقة Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford Friends. I'm your host, Lisa Farr, and I am also joined by the host of our Middle East podcast for this Swapcast, uh, Sara al Ale. Sara, in this third episode, we're going to talk about how owning a cafe changes you. So how did owning uh, this cafe change you in ways that was different to how you were when you had the pop-up? Um, it changed me a lot. Hello, first, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I'm thinking about uh, <laughs> intense uh, things. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm no longer the same uh, person for sure. Uh, it's not only owning a business; it's the pandemic that had the major effect uh, on me mm-hmm. personally. And uh, the way I think, um, now I'm reassessing my relationships with people again and again, like, let's say, if not on a daily basis, like, it's monthly basis. I wasn't like that before. And um, it happened during the pandemic. And now it's happening as a cafe owner. Mm Mm-hmm. And, um, like you, it's not just about having more friends or, uh, having a a wider network. Even people in your network, you should select them. So uh, some people get, uh, you know, this, um, they will be happy and excited about having more friends or coffee friends around them. Uh, No, it's not me. This wasn't helpful uh, for you during your experience to have a lot of people around you? um, It's helpful, but not any people. It's like even during my, um, like on a daily basis, you don't want people who are just there because they're there. (laughs) Like, Mm. uh, Like friends, you need friends who will support you. So this is the thing that I'm prioritizing now. What kind of support I can offer them and how they can support me. It's not that uh, I'm looking for something out of every friendship or uh, mm-hmm. uh, connection. No, but it's like uh, we went through very hard times uh, in the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And we need the support system. The right and support who, system, right? Exactly. So now, when why are we just having more and more coffee friends without really having the people who we really need and they need us during hard times. Mm. So this is what I'm thinking about all the time. Uh, The other thing is that I learned about myself that I can't work solo. Like, uh, I'm not kind of person who who you will just put on like uh, on a chair and a desk and tell them just work Mm -hmm. Uh, I need to see people and uh, I like to be around people and um, but the right people and what else Um, I I often say as you know uh, I often say that being a business is going to teach you everything you never wanted to know about yourself Mm-hmm. And I watched you over the past year experience some very That's difficult excuse. things um, and watched you transform as you saw those things that you didn't want to have to face. Um, and they were really, really challenging in ways that it was, I mean, it was really hard to watch you struggle with a lot of this stuff. Uh But I I often wondered, I wonder what it feels like to be on Sada's side of having to experience these things and what she's learning about herself. And one of the questions I want to ask you around that is, 
do you feel stronger now, even though you're exhausted and even though it's been a year of constant challenges as the economy has started unraveling around the world and as we've come out of a pandemic and as consumers are more price sensitive and as Saudi is experiencing all these big shifts, do you feel, despite all of that, that you're confident that you're stronger as a person? Yeah, definitely. I I feel much, much stronger now. And uh, um, I'm taking decisions, uh, let's say, faster and being less emotional about the decisions. Like before, I would think like so about so many things but yep. now i'm focusing more on the why i'm doing the decision and how it's going to help me it's You're not more like uh, who i'm going to lose in the process or what do people think about me or mm. no now it's like even if it's a hard decision that i have a difficult decision that i have to take i just have to take it and um uh, i'm more uh, let's say um like I would take before I had this fear to take a new step risks and new and new risks and uh, the step like even something very silly like uh, to call someone like okay. I would think so many times before taking that like I'm trying to avoid it all the time and uh, now when I want something to happen I just pick up the phone and just call the person. Like, what's wrong with you? Can, and, can I ask uh, you something on that? Do you think that that's cultural? Like, what what I mean by that is as Saudi undergoes all of this cultural shifting, we're asking this, uh, this new profession of people who have been conditioned over generations and millennia to mm-hmm. not speak to strangers who they don't speak to people that they don't know. What we're asking them to do now is be really hospitable to all the strangers, no matter whether they're of the same gender or different gender to them, right? And I wonder, is is that an unreasonable ask? And is that something that has changed you as you've been in this new place so that now you can pick up the phone and make these phone calls? Whereas before it was like cultural conditioning that was making you think twice. Uh, maybe part of it, but I think uh, the biggest uh, part is the confidence. Like I have more right. confidence now. Like uh, before I would pick up, I know that if I pick up the phone, like what kind of questions I should ask. All right. What, like I would think many times, okay, what I would expect from the other person to tell me and what how i'm gonna react but now i don't think about these things i i just pick up the phone i have more confidence i ask the questions that i need to ask and uh, uh, probably these uh, definitely it's the the skills that we worked on together with you as a a consultant and as my coach and uh, like i i have i think it's the confidence it's It's a it's it was one of the most thrilling things I've experienced as a, as a coach to watch you embrace like you were hungry for assertiveness training. You were hungry for tools that helped you stop overthinking. You were hungry yeah. for, for things that would help you figure out how to problem solve this and problem solve that and get things out of the way uh, in a way that, the reason it was so exciting was I watched the immediate transformation in you and then I watched it transform the people around you. And I watched women around you uh, and men, actually. I watched them want to be like you and have your confidence. It was really thrilling to watch it be so immediate. I mean, everything didn't go as, as smooth as, you know, we watched people around you get very intimidated by what was expected from them and uh, we watched that lead to some chaos and but I think that 
the reason it works so well for you was because right up front, we were very clear about what your values are. And you were able as a, as a business owner to say, well, this is what my values are. And these, these values are going to run into what the, the pillars of the business's values are. And I'm not going to compromise on those values. And we're going to look for people to, who are longing to uphold those values. And what became difficult then was that a lot of the people who came to work for you had never been baristas before. Yeah. And so what we were asking of them was perhaps something that we had taken for granted about hospitality and about perhaps going out there and doing those things. Would you agree with that? Yeah, in some uh, ways. and uh, But at the same time, uh, I'm thinking they're still young mm. and uh, the hospitality industry in Saudi haven't developed to the yeah. to the level that uh, you can just get a, a, a person with 15 years experience. You can't find that until no. now. Like a Saudi with 15 ex- years experience in hospitality doesn't, I don't think it exists. So, um, yeah, so maybe uh that's the part that we should work more on mm. and i'm willing this is something that changed in me as well is that i'm i'm giving myself some space and to relax you know that nice. they need the time and the space to work on their skills and i need to also have the time and space to relax and have a, some peace of mind and patience because and patience because I am um, maybe I expect from people the same level of performance and uh, um, that I have and this is something that's causing a lot of conflict between uh, Sarah and Sarah which yeah. is me because like I I always think maybe I'm unfair to people because I'm asking them to do stuff that um uh, maybe they can't do or they are mm-hmm. not willing to do mm-hmm. or they just don't want to do and oh yeah it doesn't mean that i can't do or i want to do that everyone else is so excited about doing it some people are there just to have the money some people are there just to uh to tell people that we're working at that i can't tell and you how many cafe owners say to me lee how come when I'm not in the cafe, my sales go down? How come when I'm in the cafe, my sales skyrocket? And I ask them, like, are you expecting your staff to be as committed to your cafe as you are? And they say, well, yes, I am. Of course I am. I'm paying them to. And this is where it's unreasonable to have that expectation, I think. To expect yeah. somebody to love your kid the way that you love your kid is unreasonable. It's never going to happen. Yeah. So this is where I uh, like I need to manage my expectations, mm-hmm. uh, and um, sometimes I just let it go because uh, it's it's causing me a lot of emotional, you know, stress yep. and uh, mental stress as well. Um, I'm a perfectionist and I just want everything to be perfect. And and this is what I have in mind or imagined that to be because it's a high-end cafe, so it should be perfect. Yeah. But at the end, we are human beings and we're working with human beings. So you can't expect from people to do, you know, the maximum while they're working in a job which is... At the end of the day, it's not their their business, right? And right, and what we have to remember is that you're in an emerging market. Like this is the yeah. beginning of the coffee industry in Saudi Arabia. It's the beginning of the yeah. coffee industry across the Middle East. I'm in a coffee industry that's 30 years developed and we're experiencing a lot of challenges over here. You guys are starting to learn how to do this. You guys are starting to figure out like what do coffee consumers in Saudi actually want at a time when Saudi is opening up for the first time in its history. That's thousands of years. 
Yeah. Also, it, there is one thing that. Uh, uh, sorry, if you want. No, go continue. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, the other thing that I'm not fe- still I'm not feeling comfortable with is that I saw the generation of my parents and um, they're committed to any job they mm-hmm. work in. Like you would see people, they've been in the same job for 15 years, 20 years, and 25 years. Now it's like. If they pass the six months, yeah, we say, wow. Yeah, yeah. We're grateful. So it's maybe here where I have, like, I'm in the middle of these two generations. Yeah. And I'm, like, looking at this generation that people are very loyal to their uh, employers and they would uh, stay in the job for 25 years. And, and the other generation, you know, that's younger than me, that's like Gen maximum y. six months yeah. yeah so i'm like in the middle and looking at them both it's uh it's something weird like that you experience all of you, you know these the whole scope of it, gener- the pendulum swings exactly also like i i was born in the 80s so even the social reform and the economic reform from the 80s till now i'm looking at yeah i went through a lot and i oh, was yeah. like wow you know, yeah. it's uh, it's maybe the new generation now. They have a lot of opportunities, and it's not like at at my you know uh, times you didn't have that much opportunities. So mm. now they have a lot of opportunities, so they are experiencing more. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, because I'm trying to understand where they're coming from and why they're doing this. And I noticed a lot of people who are like also perfectionist and they would do the same thing. They mm. would go six months here, maximum one year. They will tell you like, Khalas, I reach my maximum Learning potential, potential in this. Yes. So why would I stay in this place uh, for more than one year? Yeah. And they will go and change the job and go to another job. So maybe for us we can look at it as they're people who are careless or not serious or but at the end of the day there are people who are very successful and yep. uh, i know them personally and this is what they do so maybe they have this you know abundance of opportunity and the luxury to change one job and another and uh, to jump from one place to another and they they want more freedom and more opportunity to learn because different cafes do things differently. So in their minds, they may be thinking, well, one day I want to open my own cafe. And before that, I want to get as much experience learning from other people as possible. But the unfortunate side of this, and, you know, when we talk about like what are the things that you learn about yourself when you're doing this, it's it was surprising to me at how heartbroken I was every time someone left my business. Like you, it, for some weird reason, you take it personally when somebody, like they're leaving for all the right reasons. They've got different opportunities. They want to go and do something. But as a business owner, you're like, but why didn't they want to stay working for my business? Did I do something wrong? And it's Yeah, like- this is something <laughs> that we have to work <laughs> on because it's not something like, it's not because of you or the business. No, it's just because it's them. they. It's about them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot that being in business has taught me about myself, but I think you've covered uh, most of the the rainbow of, of things that it taught you. It teaches people. It's, it's not for the faint-hearted, is it? No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> All right, so we're going to head into the next episode. This, this is uh, a conversation where we're going to – you're going to give cafe owners or somebody who's looking to open their own cafe, you're going to give them tips on what they what they should think about and what they should do. So let's do that. Peace, love and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day.
أعزائي شكرا لمتابعتكم وحسن استماعكم إن شاء الله تكونوا استفدتوا واستمتعتوا بحلقتنا ونتمنى أنكم تكونوا جزء من مجتمع مابت فورورد إذا حابين تنضموا لنا ادعمونا على صفحتنا في منصة باتريون patreon.com/mapetforward